I believe once I click the button, it goes live stream, but I don't wait until the bar ends. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Pialino, Wampoyo, Wan, Kenichki, Inistoke, Namantimo, Machtise, Tlenica, Tlachiwalis, Tlenica, Masewan, Metlenkichiwa, Setlamantli, Wan, Nokia, Tikchiwas, Timo, Machtise, Tlenica, Tlachiwalistli, Itoka, Eli. Hi, everyone. Today we're going to be learning about agents or people who do things. And we will also be talking about the verb Eli, which is to be. And so we're going to be um, fusing those two ideas and creating sentences or more complex sentences, hopefully. Uh, so I am going to share my screen now. Hopefully you can see it. And if you can't, you let me know. And for people who are watching me on YouTube, if you, um, if you have questions, you can ask me those questions during um, in the chat, but I will check them at the very end. So hopefully right now you're gonna start seeing my class presentation. So this one I titled it, Now What Agents and To Be, <laughs> Past, Present, and Future. <laughs> okay, so today we're gonna continue. If you remember back season one, episode 17, we talked about uh, agents and then I gave you a very brief way of creating agents, but I told you back then that it was a little bit more complicated. And at that time, I only taught you how to create agents with class three verbs. Today, we're gonna expand on it or pretty much explain how to do it with any class verb. And then of course, we're gonna review the, the singular and the plural form. And then we're gonna talk about possessing agents, adding suffixes, which is basically the same. You pretty much already know that. And we're gonna add something new, which is learning about the verb to be in past, present, and future. Now, this is the verb to be like I am something, like I am a teacher, you are a student, etc. You already kind of know some of this, but you need to know how to use the verb Eli, which is to be, and it, this verb is an irregular verb. Okay. So forming agents in the singular. So I'm gonna give you examples, okay? Inin siwat tekiti. Inin siwat tekiti. Inin siwat se tekitihket. Se tekitihket. Notice that when I say tekitihket, um, I'm, I'm pronouncing this C as an H. So this C with this Q, when the C is before this Q, it's really pronounced as an H, at least in the Huasteca regions. In other regions, they might just pronounce it like a C. But in our variety, we say like this, inin siwat se tekitihket. Se tekitihket. Quali? Okay. Inin tlakat kalchiwa. Inin tlakat kalchiwa. Inin tlakat se kalchihket. Inin tlakat se kalchihket. Okay. Inin siwat temachtia. Inin siwat temachtia. Inin siwat se temachtihket. Inin siwat se temachtihket. Okay. Inin siwat teishpa. Inin siwat teishpa. So notice I'm using te, ish, and pa. You, you learned this verb, I think, a couple of lectures ago. So inin siwat teishpa. Okay. Inin siwat se teishpa. So hopefully, based on those pictures, you're able to understand what these people are or what they're doing. So inin se tekitihket, inin se kalchihket, inin se momachtihket. Oh, this is wrong. <laughs> this is a temachtihket. I messed up right there. And inin se teish packet, teish packet. Quali. All right. So, in case it wasn't very clear for you from the pictures, all of these words that end in ket, Q U E T L, 
they are all agents. You learned this already in the past. Basically, agents are people who do things. And in Nahuatl, you can create people who are doers by adding that suffix get. So here we had origin, the first verb, which is a class one verb. We had the verb tekiti. And that verb tekiti became tekitihket when we made, we went from work to worker. So when tekiti and then became tekitihket. Then we had the guy building the house or a construction worker, as I'm going to call him. Um, he was doing calchiwa from Cali, house, and chiwa, which can mean to make or to build something. You could also say calchichiwa, which also can mean construct. But in this case, I just kept it simple as calchiwa. And um, he became a calchichket, class two verb. And then we have temachtia to teach, became temachtichket, teacher. And uh, that's a class three verb. And then lastly, we have teishpa, which means to paint uh, someone's face. I forgot to put there, paint someone's face, but teishpa, to paint someone's face. From the verb pa, which is to paint. Ish, ishli means face or eyes. And te, te means somebody. So teishpa means to paint somebody's face. I guess you could interpret it as somebody's eyes, but you wouldn't paint somebody's eyes. So teishpa is to paint someone's face or to paint people's faces. That becomes teishpahket a face painter. So as you can see in Nahuatl, with all the prefixes and suffixes, you can create new words, or you could create new agents. Okay. <clears throat> so you, I told you last week that the reason I wanted you to learn the past tense root is because it has, that, uh, it has other functions. And one of the functions that it has is that you can create uh, an agent by using this um, past tense root. So if you remember from last week, I told you that, or from our classes on learning about the past tense, I told you that class one verbs, you just add the C, right? So adding the C is what the past tense root is. And so to create these agents, you're gonna first add the past tense root, tekitik, and then you're gonna add the ket. So it goes from tekiti to work, becomes tekitik, uh, he or she worked, and then you add the ket, and that's how you form the agents. So it becomes tekitihket, tekitihket, worker. Past tense root plus agent prefix teket, tekitihket, okay? Same thing with class two verbs. You're gonna take the verb. So if you remember for the, the builder of a house, we had calchiwa or construction worker. Calchiwa, because cal, cali could also mean building. So it doesn't just mean house, it could mean building. So calchiwa could mean building, constructor or building maker, construction worker, basically. So calchiwa, this is a class two verb. If you remember from class two verbs, you drop the final syllable. So calchiwa becomes calchi. And then the UH, you're gonna flip and it becomes calchi. And then calchi is the past tense root. So you add the past tense root plus the ket and it becomes calchi ket. So that's how you would say construction worker. Calchiquet. So it goes from calchiwa to calchiquet. All right, same thing with class three verbs. You have the verb temachtia, uh, someone uh, to teach people things. No, to teach people, sorry, temachtia, to teach people or to teach someone. And then you're going to con construct the past tense root. So temachtia, drop the A, add the H, becomes temachti. That's the past tense root. And then you're going to add the ket, so it becomes temachtiquet. So it goes from to teach someone something to teach her. Temachtiket. Or also tlamachtiket. Tlamachtiket just means a person who teaches someone things. So a person who teaches things is a tlamachtiket. So either temachtiket or tlamachtiket, they both mean teacher because they both have a slightly different sense. Okay? Same thing with class four verbs. Class four verbs, this one, this class four verb is the pa, which is to paint. And ishpa is just basically the same thing as the verb pa, so to paint a face, te ishpa, to paint someone's face. And if you remember for class four verbs, you keep the verb, you add an H, and then uh, to, that's the past tense root. So te, ish, uh, te ishpa becomes te ishpa, and then you add the ket, so te ishpa ket, face painter. Literally a person who paints someone's face. 
That's literally what you're saying in Nahuatl. Teishpahket. Okay. What, the reason that I point out how to do the singular form, and I'm going to give you examples on how to do the plural form of these verbs, is because they're a little bit different from each other, and people tend to kind of like mix them up. So I don't want you to mix them up. So here I'm going to give you examples. So here we have se tekitiket. Se tekitiket. And now, naman tikpiya ome tekitini. Ome tekitini. Okay. Nikpiya se kalchisket. Se kalchisket. Nikpiya ome kalchiwani. Ome kalchiwani. Nikpiya se temachtiket. Se temachtiket. Ome temachtiani. Ome temachtiani. Se a teishpahket, se teishpahket, pero ome teishpani, ome teishpani. So if you can see, it's actually a little bit simpler to create the plural versus creating the singular form of the agents. So here I have the example of the singular form, which you just learned, tekitiket, but the plural form is very simple. It's actually much simpler. You just have the verb and you add the need to it. So you don't make any changes to the verb. You just keep it in present tense, whatever it is, and you add the knee form. Okay, I want to say that this is the way this tequitini, this is the way that we do it in Huasteca. For us, tequitiquet is the singular form and tequitini is the plural form. However, other varieties of Nahuatl, they use tequitini as the singular form and also the plural form. They just add the number. So they might, you might say se tequitini, like one worker, or miak tequitini, and then they just add an H to make a plural, or they might say miak tequitini me, make it, they add a me. So that's why sometimes in some varieties of Nahuatl, they might say, oh, te machtiani. So they're not necessarily wrong. It's just in some central varieties, the singular form of the agent is just the ni. So Sete machtiani is okay in, in some varieties of Nahuatl because that's just how they form the agents. So it's not wrong. You can call somebody a sete machtiani, omete machtiani, eite machtiani, et cetera. It just depends which variety of Nahuatl you speak. And in our, in the Huasteca version, they add the ket, but um, that's the singular form and the plural form is the ni. So just know that that, um, that difference exists but it's not a problem. It's pretty much understandable most of the time anyway. Quali? So now, oh, Kena. So now I'm going to give you a verb and you're going to convert it into a doer or make it into a doer. I didn't even understand my own, my own instructions. So I'm going to give you a verb. If you don't know this verb, you have to look up what class it is and then create, make it into a doer. Okay, so you can unmute yourself. I'm gonna give you this verb. So, ya tlanel toca. So, I'm telling you what she's doing. And maybe you don't know what this one means, but maybe you could look up this verb. So, ya tlanel toca. So, a dictionary would be very helpful for you right now if you don't know this verb. You might know this verb. So, ya tlanel toca. So, I'm gonna wait for you to let me know what you would think if she was an agent, how you would call her, what you would call her. Okay, and what class verb is this? Do you know? Uh, I have my list. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while for you to know these, but the way I usually know it is I think, how do I say this verb in the past? So I say this verb in the past as So based on that information, what class verb is it? I think one and three do that. Is that right? Three does not do that. Three mm -hmm. never adds the k. They oh, no. Okay. So only uh, class three. one is the only one that you, can, you add the C. So this one, like you said, is ya se tla, But if you notice, I added the C here. And the C is coming from the fact that this is a class one verb, and the past tense is tlanel 
Yeah, so it says Tlanetokak. If you are a C, it's a class one verb. So Tlanetokak becomes Tlaneltokakket. Tlaneltokakket. So she's a believer? Yeah, she's a believer. <laughs> All right. So ya Tioneltoka. Ya Tioneltoka. So this one's a slightly different kind of a believer. Ya <laughs> Tioneltoka. So. How would you convert her into an agent? Tio no, uh, tio yeah, nah. So you just change the ending. So it's basically the same, right? Ya se tiene tio nel tocaquet, same verb. The only thing we change in here is the prefix tio. So if you remember, we learned that there are verbs that are transitive and verbs that are intransitive, right? This verb, nel toca, is a transitive verb, which means that this verb always requires an object. So if you, if you look at this previous example, we just see that she, she, she's a believer, but we don't know what she believes. And if you, why don't we know that? Because right here it just says, tla nel toca. So this verb, nel toca, requires you to say what she believes, but we don't know what she believes. So she's just a general believer. She's a believer. <laughs> So she just believes things, but we don't know what. That's why we put this tla here, tla en el toca. But over here, because you see this pope, you know she believes in God. So she's a tia en el toca. So she, she's a believer in God. So a, a, teno, a tia en el toca would be a believer, but specifically a believer in a God. So this tio is, is really teo. So if you learned classical Nahuatl, you learned that teo, teot, teot, T-E-O-T-L, teot, uh, means like God, or at least that's the interpretation that uh, the Spanish gave to this word teot, even though it may not have had that same meaning when it was originally conceived. And I cannot speak about the religious beliefs of, of the Mexican because I don't know everything, but um, now this tío, uh, this tío, at least in the Huasteca, has become tío. And so tío nel toca, it means believer in a God of some sort. So you see, you can specify specifically what a person believes because nel toca can take an object. So you can put any, any noun in here and tell, tell me that, oh, this person believes this X thing, whatever that thing is. <laughs> All right? Quali. So ya tlapoa. So how would you make him into an agent that does this thing? That does tlapoa. So you have to figure out what this verb, what class it is, and then put it in the past, and then add ket. Is it la poquetl? La poquetl? Ah, la poquetl. Aha, quali. Ya se la poquetl. So this verb, la poa, if you go look it up, it is a what class verb? I think it's class two, no? This one's a class two. And this class two verb ends in H-E way. So for class two verbs, first you're going to remove the A. Remove the A. Then you're left with with H-U, what are you going to do with the H-U? You flip them. Flip it. <laughs> and so tlapoa becomes tlapo. And we don't say it tlapo, although some varieties might say it that way. <coughs> although it's falling out of favor. <coughs> so tlapo or tlapo is how we would say it in our variety. So tlapoket is how you would say a reader. Se tlapoket, a reader. What are they reading? They're reading tla, they're reading, reading things. We don't know what they're reading, but obviously it's generally books. Now in Guerrero Nahuatl, they say amapoa. Amapoa, they're, all they're doing with this amapoa is they're adding the word amat. Amat means paper. So amapoa just means reads papers. So they, they might say, say ama, amapo, well, they wouldn't say keta, they would say amapoki, but whatever, it's similar enough. <laughs> ya se amapoki something like that. That's probably how they would say it. We would say, se ama pochket. And ama pochket would still be understood if they would just understand it more like reads papers. But it, it still understands as a reader. Understood as a reader. Okay, okay, quali. 
ya te pastía. Ya te pastía. So how would you call her as an agent? <clears> te <throat> pastía. So if you look at this verb, this one's one of the easiest. What class do you think this verb is? <clears throat> Class three. Class three. All IA slash OA verbs are always class three. I have never found an exception. Okay, so this is class three. Put in the past tense would be from te pastia to. Ya se te pastisquet. Kena, ya se te pastisquet. So the past tense of te pastia becomes te pasti. So you could just say, ya te pasti, she cured someone or she uh, healed someone. Te pastia literally means to heal. Well, it, this comes from the word patli. Patli means medicine. And then pastia means to apply medicine or to do something like that. So it's understood as like heal or, or give medicine to or um, cure. So te pastia has, that, has many meanings, but one of the meaning, meanings is to cure someone, to give them medicine, to heal them. So te pastia means right here, ya te pastia, she cures someone, she heals someone. And then te patiquet, this person does it on the regular, or just this, so this person heals people, gives people medicine, um, cures them. So this is what word you would use for like a doctor or a, or a community healer, et cetera. So this te patiquet, they would use for like doctor, or this is what they would use, okay. <clears throat> Ya cuica. Now in central varieties they say cuica. So, but it's cl close enough. Cuica, cuica or cuica. In Huasteca they say cuica. <clears throat> ya cuica. <clears throat> so, what would you call her as an agent? Ya se huicaque. And what, what class verb is this? Looks like a one. Yes, I believe so. And I believe there's actually two. Um, there's a huica a one and a huica two. Huica <laughs> one, I don't know which one is which, but one of them means to, to, um, to take something. No, yeah, to take something like from one place to another. And the other one means to sing. So huicasquet here would be to sing. And I believe they're both class one verbs. So, ni, ni wikak, I sing. Ni wikak, I sing. So, se wikakket is a singer. Quali. Now, I want you to convert these same verbs from setsin, which means singular, to, to miyakin, which means plural. Shikpatla setsin ika miyakin. Convert singular to plural. All right. So, we have se tlanel tokakket. Se tlanel tokakket. And how would you say if you had miak, many miak? If you had setlanel tokatket, but then you had miak tlanel tokatket. Well, I guess that's grammatically incorrect. How would you say miak? Many. Miak tlanel tokani. Ena. Miak tlanel tokani. So you just take the regular verb, add the ni. Now, I didn't have a picture because I don't have many believers in one picture. It's hard for me to find that. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep it with the words. <laughs> okay. Se tionel tokasket. Se tionel tokasket. I mean, this could even be like a religious person in general. Se tionel tokasket. How would you say if you had many tionel, many tionel tokasket? Miak, 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 tikpia miak, miak. Keniski tikistoskia. How would you say it? Keniski tikistoskia. Miak tionel tokani. Kena. Miak tionel tokani. Huh? So it's basically the same as the other one. Quali. Tikpia se tlaposket. 
tlen tikitoskia, que niki tikitoskia tlen tikpia miak. How would you say it if you had many? Miak tlapoani. Miak tlapoani. Did I misspell tlapoket? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, good. Se tlapoket, miak tlapoani. See, they're pretty simple, actually. Just add the ni. But what's hard sometimes for people to do is, is because the, the, the get version has the past tense, you have to remember, oh, what's the present tense? And then add the ni. Okay? Se te patihket. Se te patihket, miak. Miak. Miak te patiani. Miak te patiani. Kena. Miak te patiani. Kuali. Se wikajket. Se wikajket. Juan miak. I forgot the arrow. I don't know what I did with the arrow. Juan miak buscani. Aha. Sampa. Again? Miak wikani. Miak wikani. Kena. Miak wikani. All right. So pretty simple. One thing that I wanted you to, to remind you of was that these, these types of nouns, these agents, they don't act, when you possess them, when you say my this or your this, they don't get possessed the same way as you would possess a regular noun. If you remember back classes and classes ago when I would say like my house, we would just drop, drop the ending. But these agents, they act differently. When you possess them, basically you add the sound ka to them. So for example, if you have a tequitiquet, you have a worker, you're gonna, to say my worker, you're gonna say no tequitica, no tequitica. Now, I'm not 100% sure about the C, but I mean, the sound doesn't change. So it's no tequitica, my worker, no tequitica. Or if you wanna say my workers, no tequitikawan. So notice you're adding this ka anytime that you're possessing a ket. So you have a ket, you, when you possess it, you must add a ka. So, so some people might be like, no te uh, sorry, no tequitiquet. That's not correct. It's not no tequitiquet. It's no tequitica. And not no, no tequitikeme, kawan, keme. I don't know how to say it incorrectly, but it would be no tequitikawan. So it matters whether you have plural or not, okay? And if, but basically they get possessed differently. So here I'm giving you all the examples for the same nouns, but now with the ka. So for example, calchiquet, constructor. If you wanna say my constructor, <laughs> my house constructor. I put constructor only because I because construction worker wasn't gonna fit. So I just put constructor, but I'm specifically talking about construction worker here. It just, it wasn't going to fit in the slide and I wanted to keep it consistent. So calchisquet, if you're saying my construction worker, it would be no calchisca. You want to say my construction workers, no calchiscawan. Okay. Class three verbs, no te, uh, te machtiquet, teacher, no te machtica, my teacher, no te machtiscawan, my teachers. Okay. And class form, same thing. Te ispahket, face painter. My face painter, no te ispahka. And my face painters, no te ispahkawan. So basically this ket becomes a ka whenever it's possessed. And the truth is, it's not just when it gets possessed. Um, if you add any other, if you add any other suffix to the end, you're gonna add it with a ka. So no te machtika my teacher, but if you wanted to say it with respect, it would become no te machtikatsin, which I had taught you this back in the past, but this, this pattern pretty much applies to all classes. So this doesn't just apply to class one or class three, like in this example, it applies to all the classes. And if you wanna say multiple teachers that, are, that you respect, like let's say I wanna talk about the, all the teachers that taught me now what, I would say no te machtikatsin one. I know it's a really long word, but I think it sounds elegant. If you want to say my Nahuatl teachers, you would just add the Nahuatl in front of here. So you say, no, no Nahuatl te machtikatitzin one. No Nahuatl te machtikatitzin one. If you want to say my Nahuatl teacher, 
no, 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 These get verbs and get nouns act like regular nouns. And so you can put prefixes in front of them. So if you want to say teacher, it's not temachtike, but you want to say nawat teacher, you can combine it the same way as you would combine it with any other noun. So you would drop the TL of the nawat, nawat, and then we just, if it would become nawat temachtike, nawat teacher. No nawat temachtika, my nawat teacher. No nawat temachtikawan, my nawat teachers. No nawa te machtikatsin, my nawa teacher that I respect, and no nawa te machtikatsits, te machtikatsitsin one, my nawa teachers that I respect, etc. So these these nouns are these get nouns are basically nouns. Now another thing that I didn't put in these slides is there are very rare situations that do exist where um, you add an you can add this verb to another noun. And when you do add the verb in from in front of a noun, you have to add this ka. So one example that I you can actually find in the dictionary is nenkatlakat. Nenkatlakat. If you go look it up, I think it means like a person who roams around or whatever, a man who roams around from place to place. I forgot the exact meaning of nenkatlakat, but it's the verb nenemi. Past tense of nenemi is nenen or that's the past tense root. And then you're adding, you're adding the ka and then the tlakat. So you add, you're, you're basically saying like walker person, walker person. And then by adding the word walker to the word person, by putting the word walker in front of something, when you add any of those suffixes, you must add this ka. So nehnemi becomes nehnenka and then becomes nehnenka tlakat, person who walks a lot, okay? I guess they could probably have called them a nehnenket but I don't know why, but it actually, if you go look it up, Nehnenkatakat is actually in the Huasteca Dictionary. And so you were like, why is there a ka there? It's because they're adding a verb to a noun. And whenever you add these verbs to another, another suffix, you must add this ka, that's the connector. Okay, that's why, that's what, that's what this whole circle is about. <laughs> All right, I hope that, that was clear. Last thing that I wanna teach you for this class is uh, to be. So I've told you for like ever and ever and ever <laughs> that the verb to be doesn't exist. And it's true. It doesn't exist in the present tense. So for example, if you want to say, I am a teacher, ni te machtiket, you're a teacher, ti te machtiket, te machtiket, he or she's a teacher, ti te machtiani, we are teachers, in te machtiani, y'all are teachers, and te machtiani, they are teachers. So essentially to say something in the present tense that you are this thing, all you're doing is putting those prefixes in front of that noun or that verb. I guess you're not being a verb, but basically the same prefixes that you put in front of verbs are the same prefixes that you put in front of nouns to say that you are something. Okay, that is only for the present tense when you're talking about today in the present. But now what does have a verb um, in the past and in the future that you're going to use if you want to say, I will be this or I was this. Okay, so we have ni te machtiket, I am a teacher. Ni elis, ni te machtiket, I will be a teacher. And ni elki, ni te machtiket, I was a teacher. Okay, so really we're using this auxiliary, auxiliary verb, I don't know how to say the word, helping verb, <laughs> eli. So notice that we're using the verb eli, and this verb eli here is nielki in the past tense. This verb eli, by the way, is, a, is an irregular verb, but, um, and notice that we're putting this ni in the, in the verb, and we're also putting it in the noun. So you're doing it twice. Ni elki ni te machtiket. I was a teacher. Ni elis ni te machtiket. I will be a teacher. Okay, so this eli is just to be, but I wrote under in the nominal sense in case you're one of those, you know, grammatical, crazy linguistic people that want to be technical, <laughs> which kind of gets under my skin sometimes. But if you want to be one of those people, well, it's in the nominal sense. But they, basically this means when you name something, something like I, I am a teacher, I am funny, I am sarcastic, I am <laughs> a person. When it's a noun or an adjective that you are, this is what this verb eli means, okay? 
Now, eli is only used in any other tense except the present tense. So you cannot say ni eli ni te match ticket. Actually, you can say ni eli ni te match ticket because eli does have other meanings. But in the sense of to be, ni eli ni te match ticket does not make sense. To mean I am a teacher. If you say ni eli ni te match ticket, it does mean something, but it means I become a teacher. So to say I become a teacher, it is ni eli ni te match ticket. But in the sense of I am a teacher, it would just be ni te match ticket. So this verb eli, if you go look it up in the dictionary, you'll actually see that it has a bajillion definitions, at least five definitions. But the one that we use the most common is for the sense of to be and in the sense of to be a thing. I, I am a teacher. I am a, a student. I am um, a worker or in I am an adjective of some sort. I am funny, I am, uh, I am interesting. In those cases, that's when you would use nieli, but only in the past or future or any other tenses, conditional. Um, I don't know the other ones, technical names, but basically any other tense except the present is when you use eli. But there are situations where you use eli in the present tense, it's just that they have other meanings, but not the meaning of to be. Okay. So here are the examples. I uh, conjugated all of them for you, for you to see. So, ni elis ni te match ticket, I will be a teacher. Ti elis ti te match ticket, you will be a teacher. Elis te match ticket, notice there's no prefix here. He or she will be a teacher. Elis te match ticket. Ti elise, so uh, the plural form of elis is elise. Uh, ti elise ti te match tiani, we will be teachers. And notice that because this is plural, so is this. These have to match. Ti elise, ti te machtiani. We will be teachers. In elise, in te machtiani. Y'all will be teachers. And elise, te machtiani. They will be teachers. So these have to match. If this is plural, this has to be plural. Okay. In the past tense, it's ni elki, ni te machtiket. I was a teacher. Ti elki, ti te machtiket. You were a teacher. Elki, te machtiket. He or she was a teacher. Ti elke, ti te machtiani, we were teachers. In elke, in te machtiani, y'all were teachers. And elke te machtiani, they were teachers. Okay, so, so essentially this verb eli is what is how you would express to be in any other tense. I want to point out that this eli helping verb is only used in the Huasteca region. Other varieties, you do it a little bit different. And they might use a, another helping verb, which is yet. Yeto, ni yeto, or whatever. So just know they might say ni yetos, or but basically this eli is the Huasteca equivalent. In uh, Guerrero, in um, Guerrero or Central Nahuatl, they might say ni katka for the past and ni yes for the future. So just know that there are other forms, but this is the Huasteca form. Maybe one day we'll talk about other varieties and the verb to be. The verb to be is complicated because it's irregular and it's irregular in most languages. <laughs> Not just Nahuatl. Okay. Chinechili ika Nahuatlatoli. Tell me in Nahuatl. Okay, so we're gonna start with one verb and we're gonna get, we're gonna get all crazy on you. <laughs> or hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully this ties everything together. So you can unmute yourself. And now I just want you to tell me whatever this verb is of to say something, if you know it, or maybe you know. The verb to say something. Keniski moilia ika Nahuatl. Tlatoa. Tlatoa. Quali. So Tlatoa is the most commonly used everywhere in Huasteca and all of, all of Nahuatl. This is the most common one, although there are some uh, variety differences. Some of them don't say Tlatoa, but that's besides the point. Majority of them do. So to say something, Tlatoa. Okay. Now we're going to say, Keniki Moili Aikanahuat, speaker. One speaker. La toquet. La toquet. Yep. Simple, right? La toquet. Quali. So, tlatoa, class three verb. Drop the A, add the H, add the ket. La toquet. Okay. How about speakers? Try 
trust me, there's a progression. <laughs> you probably think it's easy. <laughs> but you know me, I, I'm gonna make you do a progression. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Tlacotiani. So, so Tlatoket comes from the verb Tlatoa. So to make it more than one, you do not need the ket part. All you have to do is add one thing to the verb. So Tlatoa becomes Tlatoani? Tlatoani. So even though Tlatoket is one, Miak Tlatoani. Se Tlatoket, Miak Tlatoani. So this, this verb, once uh, you make it more than one, it doesn't change. So the verb stays exactly how it is. And all you do is add the ni. Quali. But now if you want to say my speaker, the, the person who speaks, not a speaker like, <laughs> like an electronic device, no. A person, the, my speaker, who I brought to this event. <laughs> How would you say it in Nahuatl? No tlatoca. No tlatoca. No tlatoca. No tlatoca. I think I'm missing an H, but don't quote me on that. I sometimes get confused with whether there's an H here or not. I think there should be, because it's a class three verb, but there might not be. Okay, what about my speakers at my events? Nahuatl speaker. I would say a Nahuatl speaker. Say a Nahuatl speaker. Nahuatl toket. Yeah, Nahuatl toket. So it's the same as speaker, but all we're doing is adding this like description that it's a Nahuatl speaker. So we're taking this TL, we're dropping it, and then we're adding it to the other noun. So Nahuatl plus Tlatohket becomes Nahuatl Tlatohket, Nahuatl speaker. Quali? Kenihki moilia, Nahuatl speakers. Nahuatl Tlatoani. Nahuatl Tlatoani. Nahuatl Tlatoani. Okay, so Tlatohket, se Tlatohket, miak Tlatoani. So miak Se nahuatlatohket, miak nahuatlatoani. Quali? Kenihki moilia, I am a nahuatl speaker. So you know how to say nahuatl speaker, but now you want to say I am one. Because now you are one. <laughs> or you will be. That's, that's the plan. Ti inelise in Nahuatlatoani. Ni Nahuatlatoket. Ni Nahuatlatoket. Quali. So it's the same as Nahuatl speaker, but you just got to put the ni in front. So ni Nahuatlatoket. I'm a Nahuatl speaker. Quali. I was a Nahuatl speaker. Somehow you forgot it, but you were one at one point. <laughs> I know this isn't really weird. I don't know. You could. This could be true, but we're just... So we could, you know, learn grammar here. I was a Nahuatl speaker. So now you're gonna use a helping verb. Nielki ni Nahuatlatoket. Kena. Nielki ni Nahuatlatoket. Oh, I messed up right there. There should be an E. I messed it up. Nielki ni Nahuatlatoket. I was a Nahuatl speaker. So now we're using this verb eli and putting it in the past tense. That's how we know it was in the past. 
ni el ki ni nahuatlatoket. If we say ni el ni nahuatlatoket, it means I become a Nahuatl speaker. Ni el ni nahuatlatoket, I become a Nahuatl speaker. Okay? And I will be a Nahuatl speaker. I will be one. Ni elis ni nahuatl toket. Yeah, ni elis ni Oh God, I forgot again. Oh God, hold on. <laughs> Excuse the errors. <laughs> when you're doing this in, late at night, <laughs> stuff happens. Ni elis ni nahuatl toket. All right, she was a nahuatl speaker. She, she was an Awa speaker. I guess no more, she's no longer an Awa speaker. She's trying to hide her roots. She's been colonized. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <It's okay. laughs> Political agenda, I'm sorry. <laughs> she was a Kunawa speaker. She forgot though, turns out. El ki nahuatl toket. El ki nahuatl But now she's reclaiming her 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 past. <laughs> now she will be a nahuatl toket. Sorry, she will be a nahuatl speaker. Elis nahuatl toket. Elis nahuatl toket. Quali. Oh, I don't know why I repeated this. Okay, this one shouldn't be in there. Yeah, I repeated one. Oh, yeah. I just repeated one. I should take that slide out. Okay, y'all are Nahuatl speakers. Ustedes son Nahuatl hablantes. Y'all are Nahuatl speakers. Kenichimoilia. So this is in the present tense. So we don't need a helping verb. And then we just need Nahuatl speakers. Inawatlatoani. Uh-huh. Inawatlatoani. So we gotta put this in for the ya. And the nawatlatoa is the verb and the ni makes the plural. So inawatlatoani, y'all are nawat speakers. Quali, y'all were nawat speakers. And then something happened. Y'all were nawat speakers. See, the reason I'm saying then something happened is because this eli, this elki, it makes it sound like it's permanent. Because you will learn probably next week or the week after, depending on when I decide to teach you. There's another tense in the past that, that says you used to be. And this one is like more like, or you were doing it. Um, but this elki was like, this happened and it's done with. In elki? In our toket? Or in in Nahuatlatoani? Uh huh. In elke in in Nahuatlatoani. So you have to change the verb elki to elke, and you have to put the in in elke, and then in again in Nahuatlatoani. In elke in Nahuatlatoani. Y'all were Nahuatl speakers, but now y'all will be Nahuatl speakers. <clears throat> Inelise, in Inelise, in Nahuatlatoani. Okay, in Inelise, in Nahuatlatoani. So in for y'all. Elise is the is the future form in plural. So ustedes, in Elise, uh, y'all will be. And then in Nahuatlatoani is the plural form of Nahuatlatoani, but the in is is it's indicating the to be part also. Okay, Tlaso Kamati Miak. Uh, if y'all have questions, ask me. Yeah, stop sharing, okay. So let me see if I have any questions in the chat. Uh, it looks like Adrian shared a, a dictionary. Um, 
So you go look at the links. Is Tlatoa more common to use than Saniloa? Tlatoa is more commonly used in all the other regions of Nahuatl speakers. And Saniloa is more commonly used in Huasteca region. Saniloa is, um, is not as widely used, but Tlatoa is understood in all pretty much all the regions they will understand Tlatoa. So that's why I kind of rather prefer that you learn Tlatoa because it's more wide reaching, although in a lot of Huasteca texts and when you hear them, they might say Saniloa because Saniloa is also understood. Um, what would be, that would be a, oh, Lichea, he, he sent you the link to the, to the dictionary on the top. So you have to do a scroll to the top and you'll see the dictionary. You just gotta keep scrolling to the, in the chat, just go look in the chat and scroll it. All right, and let me see um, if anybody asked any questions on the YouTube, unless I'm not live on YouTube. Oh, I am. We are live. Yeah. Hey, how would you translate Altepe, Altenepantla? Altepenepantla. Uh, this uh, Altepet means um, Altepet means city. And Nepantla is a classical word, I believe. Uh, it's a prefix, a suffix, sorry. And I think it means within, but I have to look up Nepantla because I don't, I haven't used Nepantla in a long time. Um, but it's a suffix that means, I think, within or throughout Nepantla. Let me look up Nepantla in the dictionary. <clears throat> But it's something like within the city or something like that. Uh, let me look up Nepantla. Oregon Dictionary, come, come to my rescue. Nahuatl, Oregon <laughs> Dictionary. Because I don't want to turn on lexicon because it's going to be a mess. My computer's being slow. <laughs> and I don't want that. Oregon Dictionary. OK, let's see. Nepantla. So. I don't know if Nepantla is still used in other varieties of Nahuatl, but they don't really use it in Huasteca. But I know it's a classical um, construction, this Nepantla. Nepantla, Yehuantin Yeske in Mesapan will be there. Nepantla, Yowal Nepantla, midnight, between us, between, in the middle of. So Altepe Nepantla means in the middle of, between the city. So something like in the middle of the city or throughout the city or in, in between the city. That's what Altepe, Altepe Nepantla means. Something like that. Uh, um, Altepe uh, Ciudad Elegido. Hmm. I don't know. So me say Ciudad Elegido. I don't know what that means. Te gustaría trabajar en mi colegio, hermano. Yo tengo un colegio de idiomas. Nos hace falta un maestro de Nahuatl. Okay, so my issue, oh, gracias, Helu, no puedo, para mí es muy difícil ser maestro en algún, o hacer, ser maestro en tiempo entero, porque tengo tantos, tantas obligaciones, trabajo tiempo entero como farmacéutico, entonces todo lo que hago, lo hago en mi tiempo libre, y casi no tengo mucho tiempo libre, entonces, Por lo general, cuando la gente me pregunta que si puedo ser maestro, les voy a decir que no. Y por eso tengo las clases libres aquí en, en, uh, gratis aquí en YouTube para que cualquiera las pueda ver a cualquier hora que puedan, porque yo no siempre estaré disponible para enseñar. Y además tengo muchos proyectos y los quiero acabar. So for people who don't speak Spanish, essentially he asked me, can I be his teacher in his class? My answer to that is generally basically no, because I'm so busy, I'm a full-time pharmacist, so I don't 100% have a lot of time. So everything that I do for my Nawa class, I do it because uh, on my free time, whenever I can, and sometimes I, I get behind. Um, and that's because I'm just very busy. So if somebody wants me to work for them as a teacher, I'm pretty much gonna tell you no. Um, and that's why I have my classes for free in, um, in on online so that you can watch it whenever you feel like it. <laughs> does Classical Nahuatl use Eli as well? No, Classical Nahuatl does not use Eli. Classical Nahuatl uses Katka and Yes. So to say I was a teacher, they would say Ni Katka Ni, ni Temachtiket or Oni Katka Ni Temachtiket. 
and to say, I will be a teacher, they would say, ni yes, ni temashtiket. So they use katka and yes. Um, and I don't remember the plural forms. Oh, oh. I think it's, it's otikat, otikat, katke. I forget the plural form of katka and the plural form of yes, I think it's yeske. So ni ti yeske, we will be teachers. Ti yeske, ti te machtiani. Ti yeske. And the plural form of katka is escaping me, but it's, it might be katikate, ka, kate. Oh, tikate. I think it's kate. So we would say otikate te, ti te machtiani. Otikate ti te machtiani, which I think would be we were teachers, but don't call me on the kate because I, I haven't done class in a while but they are slightly different and some varieties still use it. Do you do the Purépecha speak another language? Yes, Miguel, the Purépecha speak a completely different language and I'm actually learning it. I'm in the process of learning it. Um, the Purépecha language is similar to Nahuatl in the sense of they're both agglutinating languages. So they construct bigger words based on adding, well, in Purépecha, they only add suffixes to verbs to make nouns and to make um, bigger ideas. So mm, Purépecha is a highly verb-focused language that is also agglutinating, but they only add suffixes. They don't add any prefixes. They also have really long words, but none of the words or pretty much none of the words correlate with Nahuatl. The sounds are different. They have the letter R. Um, they have the verb to be. <laughs> Um, and so it's it's much different, and um, I'm I'm in the process of learning it. Um, there are I can only think of two words that are this very similar between Nahuatl and Purépecha, and that's the word the word for cat. They say misitu misitu for cat, and in Nahuatl it's miston or mistli. The older word is mistli. So mm, that word cat must be a very old word because they both share that word. And also the word for money, uh, which is, they say tumina, tumina. And it comes from the, uh, now it also has the word, word for money, which is tomin. And I believe it's because in Spanish, the word for money, uh, one of the old words for money was tom, tomina or tomin. I forget the exact word in Spanish, but it was borrowed from Spanish. And that's why they have that common commonality, but for the most part, they are not at all similar. And in fact, if you go listen to Purepecha, you're gonna hear it, it's like way different. And I actually like how it sounds and I'm in the process of learning it. And I plan to be quattrolingual or whatever you call that or polyglot or whatever you call that. So my goal is to learn Purepecha because I was actually born in Michoacan and that's the next language I want to learn. Uh, buenas noches, compas y profesor. Buenas noches. All right, any other questions, Imo Juantin? Amo, amo in Kipiatlatlanilistli. Okay, if no other questions, I'm gonna stop recording and stop being live. And this will be posted as soon as I exit. Timo um, Itase, I don't know if I'm gonna have class next week if I get too lazy or too busy, but if I don't, we might just have like a homework session where we go over homework from this year, from this session or whatever, uh, from, uh, from episode one through five, if I get too busy or if I don't, I might actually have class. The what I plan to teach then in the next lesson is el yaya, so yaya, which means used to be, uh, and maybe another tense. But essentially, the focus on course two is just tenses, so I'm just going from tense to tense. Okay, uh, take care.